What is going on guys? Future world champion Bucky Roberts here. And in this video, chess endgame for beginners, I wanna to talk to you guys about checkmating with two queens. Now I know this kind of seems like a silly thing to go over in a chess video because if you have two queens against one little king, then I mean, it's just a, such a dominating position. Even if you're a beginner, you're almost guaranteed to win. However, the reason I wanna go over this is because for a lot of beginners, they don't exactly have a strategy. In other words, when they get to this point in the game, they have to mentally calculate a bunch of different lines and say, okay, to checkmate this king, I need to move this queen here, and then, okay, if I move this queen here, it can attack because this queen has these squares covered, yada yada, tomato, tomato. But the problem with that is that even though you can win that way, let's say that you're playing a timed game and you only have 10 seconds left, even though you're up by two queens, uh, that calculation can take longer than 10 seconds and you can end up losing on time. And aside from that, it's just always good to have a strategy anyways. So in this video, like I said, we're gonna be covering two queens and not only checkmating with two queens, but specifically the staircase pattern. Now, this is a very specific pattern for mating. And I mentioned that because you're gonna notice in these examples, there are probably gonna be ways that you can mate faster with two queens, but I wanna cover this one specific strategy first. So what is the staircase pattern? How can we use it to mate one king? Well, the way that I imagine it is that this chessboard right here, this entire chessboard is chilling on a huge cliff. And it's our job to push this enemy king off the cliff. So how do we do that? Well, we first wanna pick a side that we wanna push him off. And for this, I'm just gonna pick the eighth rank up here. So we're gonna to try to push the king off the top of the chessboard. So how do we do that? Well, to do that, our two queens are going to essentially act as a team. Now, one of these queens is going to act as a fence or a barrier, and the other one's gonna be the attacker. So this position we're looking at right here, this queen on b4, we notice that it is covering all of these squares right here. Now that means that it's essentially acting as an invisible fence and this king is never going to be able to move to the fourth rank or three or two or one. It's pretty much confined to this top area of the board. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and bring this other queen up to a5 and go ahead and check the king. Now, since this queen is covering this area, the king can't move down. And now that this king, or excuse me, this queen is checking all along this area, the king has no choice but to move to one of these squares. So let's just go ahead and pick this one. So now that we essentially had an invisible fence and an attacker, we're just gonna follow that same pattern. However, after this queen goes ahead and is the attacker, their role now changes to the invisible fence. So you can now see that this queen is now blocking all of these squares from the king. So now we can go ahead and move this queen up and attack the king. Now since the queen on a5 is blocking the entire fifth rank, and the queen on b6 is checking all along the six rank, then the king doesn't have any option except to move to one of these squares. Let's say he moves over here, and then we just keep repeating the pattern, pushing the king towards the edge. So let's go ahead and move the queen on a5 to a7, move the, uh, the king up here anywhere we want, and then for the last blow, since we have all of this blocked and the king is pretty much confined to this area right here, we can go ahead and take this queen and deliver the last checkmate. So this, of course, is a checkmate. The king has nowhere to go. And that is the staircase pattern. And I guess they call it the staircase pattern because the squares that we follow for the queens, they essentially look like a staircase. So now let's go ahead and take a look at one more example. And in this demonstration, I wanna point out one way that you can indeed uh, lose this position if you do something silly. So there are really only two ways that you can lose a uh, queen and queen versus king end game. And that is one, if you, well, I guess this isn't really a loss, but you can stalemate them. So if you put the king in a position where it's not in check, but it has no squares to go to because then it will be in check or just be able to be captured, that's a stalemate. So you wanna avoid that. And also 
take note that a king itself can never just go ahead and approach one of these queens because the queen can attack in all directions. It's like a bishop and a rook combined. So the king can never go square by square and come up to a queen and capture it. However, if you do have one of your queens and you move them directly over to the king, to a square right next to the king, and that queen isn't protected, then the king can go ahead and capture that queen. So let's say that uh, you know we had our queen on this square, the king could just go ahead and capture it. So we wanna avoid that as well. So what I'm gonna do in this example actually, instead of playing both sides, is I'm just gonna click this little button, finish against computer, and I'll demonstrate that way. So that way, you know, I'm playing against Stockfish right here, which is uh, chess AI, if you don't know. So what I'm gonna do is white is, okay, first I'm gonna say this king, I need to push him off a side. He's closest to this right side, so that's usually the system you wanna follow. First find the side that the king is closest to and decide to push him off that side. So okay, now what I wanna do with that in mind is I need to set up a barrier to prevent this king from going in this direction. So what I can do is I can bring one of these queens over to f8 and then once I have a queen on there, they're gonna be controlling or basically making an invisible fence along the entire uh, f-file right here. So let's just go ahead and bring the queen on b4 over and all right, so they move their king to g6. So now what we can do is essentially saying this queen is acting as the fence now we can bring this queen over to deliver the check. Now this is actually a good position. I'm glad they play this way because it demonstrates one thing that you do not want to do. So <laughs> it would be a deadly mistake to say, okay, we already know that this queen on G2 is controlling this entire column right here or uh, file, I guess the more technical term is. So we can just bring this queen over, deliver the check, and it should be good to go if we just move f8 to h8. Well, then the king can just go ahead and take it. And by the way, I wanna point out that there is actually a checkmate in one that I see. Um, since the queen on f8 is controlling g8, h8, g7, and h6, so the king can't move to any of these places, this queen on g2 can actually just move to c2 and then it would be checking the king and blocking all the escape squares so it would be a uh, checkmate that way in one but that's not the uh strategy i'm trying to demonstrate in this video so instead what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna say okay we got this blocked off let's just go ahead and take this queen move it down here so now this is still blocked off however now i can take the queen on f1 and deliver a checkmate on h1 so game over i won and there you go so again that's the basic strategy of the staircase uh in the upcoming videos i'm going to be covering two rooks a queen and a rook and just be going over some more examples and i'll try to post some examples in the description below if you look at it and you want to practice so yeah uh the basics of it is try to push the king over a cliff your two queens act as a team. One of them is an invisible fence. The other one delivers the attack. The one that delivered the attack after the king moves, it then becomes the invisible fence and the two teammates kind of switch roles. So practice it. It sounds kind of complex at first, but you'll get the hang of it pretty soon. So everyone, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.